Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and a new edition of our online yeah, virtual interview presentation. And today we have Caledonia Mining here, the very successful and largest gold miner out of Zimbabwe. And Mark Learmans, the CEO, whom I see here already from New Jersey or in London, you are, Mike, uh, live and welcome and uh, very well. Yeah, good morning to you. How are morning, you? Good morning, morning Jochen, very well. How are you? Perfect. Thank you. All fine. And yeah, you just brought out your Q1 numbers, by the way. Also, first of all, thanks uh, very much for the dividend. And again, an increased dividend. This is what we love to see as shareholders. And as I'm a long-term shareholder of your company too. So I would dive directly into the quarter Q1 results, uh, which was, let's say, a little bit shaky on the one hand. But on the other hand, you guys are making very good progress. So Mike, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Jochen. Um... Let me just run through very quickly this uh, little little presentation we've got. I mean, it's fair to say, Jochen, you're quite right. The quarter one this year was 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 probably the hardest quarter we've had for quite some time. A combination of of operational issues and uh, financial issues, and I'll, I'll happily explain both of those. But the critical thing is that both of those issues, operational and financial, uh, were resolved by the end of the quarter or shortly afterwards. So. You know, I think we should look at quarter one as a as a, a short term blip. So, you know, production for the quarter was seven percent down um, from the comparable quarter, and I'll explain why in a moment. Obviously, we benefited from the higher gold price, but that um, that meant that uh, you know revenue still increased, but not not perhaps not by as much as it should have done. Mm -hmm. Gross profit, yeah, stayed about the same at about ten million. EBITDA kind of stayed the same as well at about ten million. Um, now, the only sustaining cost per ounce uh, went up by nineteen percent. And that's largely because the the grade at the mine went down quite significantly. So although the cost per tonne mined at the mine in the quarter didn't move very much, because that tonne contained less gold, that meant that the cost per ounce went up. And again, I can reassure you that um, that the grade has now um, has now normalized. Mm -hmm. so that question mark, question mark. What was the reason that the grade went down? Oh, the grade the grade went down because um the mine we operate, um, we, we we mine sort of six or seven ore bodies. Some of them are high grade, some of them are low grade. And unfortunately, towards the end of last year, in one of the high grade areas, there was a um, there was a, an over exuberant amount of blasting took place uh, mm -hmm. by uh, by one of the supervisors, which caused a fall of ground, which meant that 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 stope that high that high yielding quite large volume stope was out of action for um, seven, seven or eight weeks whilst we fixed it. And that, I'm afraid, dragged down. Um, and we had to, we could we could make up the tonnage elsewhere, but that wasn't the same high grade tonnage. And okay. so that, that's why the grade came down, but it's recovered. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that means you have now fixed that. And it means yeah. to me then that we just get the other high grade uh, just later in the year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this, this 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 really. So as I said, just talking about production, thirteen thousand two hundred ounces. It was very the first the first oh, two months of the year was, was incredibly rainy. It is the wet season. But it's something like two and a half times the normal level of rain. And you know, we're an underground mine, so it's not as though we're an open, open pit mine which which acts as a big sort of swimming pool. But the the water did get in, and that we lost about uh, five or six days because of that. Again, all fixed. Um, our production in April was. Um, 5,470 ounces. So that's about a, about a thousand ounces a month better than the average that we achieved in um, in the first quarter. So that should that should give you comfort that we dealt with the the grade issues. And now having got the the central shaft uh, commissioned at the end of the quarter, we're now using the central shaft to um, hoist uh, waste material. So that frees up. Um, uh, capacity on the other shaft. We're now using it to uh, lower men down the, the shaft, uh, so that really increases their efficiency. So what you should now see for the rest of the year, quarter on quarter, is production now beginning to increase, so that from 2022 onwards, we'll be achieving 80,000 ounces a year. So frankly, 2021 got off to a slow start, but as you can see from April, we think we've put that behind us, and um, we can now continue to increase production and get us up to that target level of 80,000 ounces a year. Mm -hmm. okay. Super. And you, and you still stick with the guidance 2021 and also yeah, we still stick year. with guidance. We still stick with the guidance, and hopefully, as the as the as the year moves on, we can mm -hmm. um, we can uh, close that gap. I mean, critically, in terms of achieving this production ramp up, the thing we were most worried about was um, spillage in the new shaft from the from the skip, um, which you know, which which then 
means you've got to stop hoisting to take the spillage mess out of the bottom. That's actually nothing like as, as bad as we'd expected. And so actually, in terms of the ramp up of um, production, things are going pretty well, actually. So we're, we're, we're very comfortable. So that's just a bit more information. That just shows the the, yeah. um, the build up. So we're getting the tons. It, it really was a great issue. Um, so this is this is the profit and loss accounts. I've mentioned that the um, the revenue was was a combination of a higher gold price but lower sales. Uh, production cost um, looks to have gone up, but there's actually only a four percent increase in the cost per ton. So as we as the grading proves, and then as we begin to realise economies of scale, we're quite confident that the cost per ounce should come down. Um, one of the odd things is that because of coronavirus, we couldn't uh, travel, uh, we couldn't go anywhere, we couldn't do anything. So our uh, G&A costs stayed reasonably constant. It's worth noting that something like uh, two thirds of our G&A cost relates to um, uh, wages and salaries. And a big proportion of those are denominated either in sterling or in um, South African rands. And um, what you may not be aware of is the is the US dollar has weakened considerably um, over recent over recent mm -hmm. quarters, and that does actually tend to increase the U.S. dollar cost of those rand and sterling based um, sterling based uh, salaries. There's nothing we can do about that. Foreign exchange game is fair. That, that was much lower. It's fair to say that the the rate of devaluation of the local currency has um, has diminished Im immensely. And then other income last the first quarter of last year at 1.7 million, nearly two we had nearly two million dollars of of some funny government grants coming in in the first quarter of 2020 uh, which had now been suspended so that that wasn't a recurring that wasn't a recurring um a recurring item of, of revenue for us mm -hmm. just looking at production cost but every much everything actually is pretty much as we'd expected we've increased the headcount quite substantially over the course of the last year to put us in the position where we can increase our production so that that's why the increase goes up and also so there's increase in headcount but also because our workers couldn't go on um on holiday anywhere uh, there wasn't there was an increase in in the leave pay but but that whilst that looks quite a big jump up it actually was pretty pretty well controlled the only area the only area where we saw um costs that were running ahead of budget was was in the use of diesel for electricity and as you as you know we've got a plan to deal with that we're um we're now embarking on constructing a solar project which we should should um reduce our, our, our diesel consumption. So what, 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 what is the status with that solar uh, plant? When do you think it's fully operable? Uh, by this time next year. So we, we raised so, 12, and a half, we raised 12 and a half million dollars at the end of, in, in the middle of last year. We're now beginning to spend that. Mm -hmm. And so when I come and talk about the cash in a minute, you know, our cash will inevitably uh, run down because we're now beginning to spend the money that we raised and which is earmarked for the solar project. But yeah, we're, we're in the procurement phase and it should be running by, um, and I thought within, within the next 12 months, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so the cost per ounce, so the, really the cost per ounce, online cost increases by 19%. And that's, as I say, there's, there's only a 4% increase in the cost per ton, but it's the lower grade that did the damage. And that, I'm afraid, flows through into the all-in all sustaining cost, which if you strip out this silly export, in, export incentive credit, um, only in, increased by the same amount. So the costs, the costs are under control. We're, we're quite comfortable with that. Now the other, the other, uh, and this this just shows GNA, and you can see that the the GNA costing barely moved in total, one point five to one point six, but it's the wages and salaries that, that moved significantly, uh, and that's and that's because of the uh, the devaluation of the dollar, which I've already already spoken about. Um, that, now the other the other problem we we had in the quarter, I've already discussed the operational issue, but the other problem we had in the quarter was the, the cash outflow, mm -hmm. and we the, the cash in the quarter we started the quarter with about 19 million dollars of cash uh, as you can see here we started with 19 million we ended with 13 million so there's a six million dollar cash outflow in the quarter and the biggest problem was here working capital 7.2 million dollars outflowed in working capital and the big culprit there was that we we built up a big uh, receivable for gold gold deliveries at the end of the quarter. Now, what was happening in the quarter is that the first part of the quarter, we simply were not being paid for the gold that we delivered. Now, the Reserve Bank just wasn't paying us for the gold we delivered. And our response to that is that if they don't pay us, we don't deliver, quite simply. Now, partway through the quarter, about the middle of the quarter, so I think about 14 February, the responsibility for paying us for deliveries moved from the Reserve Bank to the refinery. 
and the refi and, and since that hap after that happened, the, the 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 timing of payments improved enormously. We're always paid on the due date, but that, now we have the difficulty of trying to 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 put into push through the refinery the quite large amount of gold that we we built up, and the refinery just didn't have the financial capacity to to um, to manage that backlog quickly enough. And we only managed to deliver the 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 rest of the gold towards the end of the quarter, and they only paid us for that in the right in the first week of April. And so I'm afraid at the end of so if our year end had been say mid April, this wouldn't have looked quite so bad. But because our year end was our quarter end was the end of March, we showed a big receipt. Now I'll, I'll address this in a moment. So that's the biggest problem. And then in, and then also as we're um, as we're now beginning to move on to the procurement phase in um, in the solar project. We made a two million dollar prepayment for something, which is, you know, it's just part of normal business. So that's the biggest problem I think that we um, we faced, and I can I can address that in, in in a moment. And again, if you look at the if you look at the balance sheet, you can see the current assets increased. The, that's 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 working capital increased from sort of twenty twenty three point nine million to twenty twenty nine point seven, and that's really because of the increase in the trade receivables and the deposit for the solar panels. We did have a gold ETF, so um, we had surplus cash sitting in South Africa, which we needed to keep in South Africa for um, for um, operational reasons. In South Africa, we're not allowed to hold our cash in US dollars. We have to hold it in rands. And so to protect our position, we we help, we put it into a gold ETF. We've actually now just realized that gold ETF and that money's come back to me here in um, here in Jersey. And you so, must have made a profit probably. <laughs> well, it wasn't, it wasn't there to make a profit. It was there to protect it from the rand. Yeah. So this really is what it comes down to. It, this business is all about Where's our cash? Do we have cash and where is our cash? And so what you see here is our cash at the end of March 2020, at the end of December 2020, March 2021, then April 2021. And you can see that the position, the cash position just in that one month from the end of March to the end of April increased by $3.3 million because we got the um because we got the the payment of the gold um that we that was still sort of receivable. Uh, so you can see the cash in Jersey sort of more or less stayed the same. And that's after that's after taking account of the fact that right at the end of April, we paid a, a dividend of about one and a half million dollars. And I think what's also nice to know is you can see people are often very concerned that we're um, we find it difficult to get cash out of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. What you can see here is we actually have we're not running an excess cash position in, in Zimbabwe. And actually of that three point two million at the end of April, I can tell you that. Yesterday, I received uh, nearly $2 million out of Zimbabwe yesterday. So mm -hmm. you know, we do get cash out of Zimbabwe and we are holding cash in Jersey. Uh, mm -hmm. So people, sh people should, be, um, they should be reassured about that. And then finally, I know it's a, it's a subject that's close to your heart yeah. and mine as well. I'm a, I'm a shareholder. My, you know, we, my, my most beloved slide. <laughs> you know, like, you know, we, we have, you know, we started increasing the dividend early in, early in 2020. 2020. Um, we would so we increased it from six and seven eighths to seven and a half. We would probably have increased it again from seven and a half upwards, but because it, when April came along last year, there was the coronavirus, and we just didn't think it appropriate to increase the dividend at that time, so we kept it level. But since then, we, we've consistently increased it. And our message is very our message is very clear. You know, we now the central shaft is finished at Blanket Mine. We're increasing production. Our capex is falling, and we expect our costs will fall. So we're going to generate more cash coming out of Blanket Mine. And we've always been very clear that we intend to share that increased cash with shareholders. So part of it going to shareholders, that's me and you, Jochen, and part of it being used to invest in um, in new projects. So, um, like I say, the first quarter was was challenging. But um, hopefully I've been able to reassure you that the operational challenges that we faced in the quarter and the financial challenges we've put behind us. And uh, we're very excited about the, the prospects for the business over the course of the next, certainly the next year, but certainly the next two to three years. Yeah, absolutely. No, it looks all in all, it looks very good, I must say. Thank you very much, Mike. And uh, yeah, I can... I think I can stop the presentation here. Um, yeah, one one more question, of course. Can you maybe say two words to uh, Glenn Hume and uh, Connemara? How is it going there? Because those are your, I would say, two future projects. If successful, those are the next mines, probably. Yeah. So, so we did start early, early drilling at Glen Hume, and I've got to say that was probably a mistake. We should have, we should have paused and um, and got the. We've got the infrastructure set up properly, uh, so I think we probably went went too quickly. It's now it's now going a lot better. The drilling is going a lot better, 
uh, and we're evaluating the results. So I think I think uh, it, it, we underestimated, and actually perhaps we shouldn't have underestimated because we know how difficult things can be in Zimbabwe. But just simple stuff like, you know, getting the warehouse and getting the electricity supply, you know, it was it was difficult. So uh, Glen Hume, after a slow start, is um, is improving. Connemara is very different. Um, we actually have a body of geological information already. Which we're busy, which we're busy evaluating on a desktop basis before we before we rush into the field and start exploring. So we'll probably start drilling at um, at Connemara out of thought in uh, June, July. So it's too early. It's too early to say on both of those, um, but we're very excited. And let's face it. And those are the first two. We're still we're still looking. We're still, we're still optimistic. We can get our hands on on other properties in Zimbabwe. So um, you know things things. Actually, the, the pace of the 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 outlook for getting our hands on other stuff in Zimbabwe actually appears to be improving. Um, mm -hmm. Things seem to be moving more quickly than they have done for many years. Super. Perfect. Well, Mark, thank you very much for this uh, great presentation. And uh, for me, it's important, first of all, show the dividend. But secondly, you overcame all the challenges and uh, you have fixed them. And now you're back on the uh, full scale, full, spread, full throttle, I would say, right? Absolutely. Full ball. Super. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, talk to you soon and wish you all the best. Thank you, Joachim. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Mark Leomans, the CFO of uh, Caledonia Mining. And you heard it. Despite some challenges in Q1, everything is fixed now. Things are going the right way. They have again increased the, the uh, quarterly dividend. And I have a very good feeling that this will move on over the next quarters too. And uh, yeah, this, the new central shaft is now yeah, fully in, in up and running and uh, will help a lot to increase the production, but also to bring in the future again the costs down. I think Mark explained extremely well why the costs were up in the first quarter and what happened. And uh, this is what I like. This is transparent communication. This is honest. This is real. And uh, yeah, in April was already much, much better. And uh, you probably saw also the production is already up well um, in comparison to the first three months per month, uh, or, or let's say on a monthly basis. And this is exactly what we see. The guidance is uh, still yeah the same. And also for next year, we we expect over 80,000 ounces and then with, with uh, much, much lower costs. So I think great uh, opportunity here, especially with this, yeah, uh, I think too cheap stock price, honestly, and with a nice dividend yield around the three, three and a half percent, which will increase in the future. You should definitely have a look at this fantastic company. Thanks for watching us and bye bye from Austria today.